read comic books voraciously. It's a whole other area of endeavor for me, but one that I'm seriously committed to. Of course, stand for themselves. And what I said to the people who made these things, I said, don't be too bound by the fact that this is an adaptation. Make it itself. And there really is some remarkable stuff. And I was delighted by the way that John Bolton adapted in the Hills of Cities for Tapping the Vein, a very difficult story to transfer to visual form. I thought he achieved some remarkable images. I was at the Fangoria convention over last weekend Eight-year-olds were coming up with tapping the vein in one hand and a copy of the Books of Blood in the other. It's uh, kind of a bit uh, extreme for such a young kid. It think. is extraordinary how, but you know, if they're going to read, uh, if 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 it means people are going to read, I love that. Mm -hmm. uh, too few people are reading. When I was a kid, I would build those Aurora models. Remember, like sure, you know, I used to build those. Weren't they great? And now uh, I get sent through the post the boxed pinhead kit. Mm -hmm. And now it's, uh, it's wonderful. <laughs> Things come full circle. I am now the maker of something for a new generation of monster-obsessed kids. Congratulations. You have just purchased Clive Barker's Pinhead Cenobite. This museum-quality reproduction is designed for the serious collector of the bazaar. Please follow the assembly instructions carefully. First, cut away any excess plastic with a hobby knife. Uh, careful not to sever the fingers. Time to assemble your model. Cement upper torso to lower torso. Caution, glue vapors may cause brain damage. You are now ready to finish your pinhead. Paint all vestments black, including cassock, rope, and cummerbund. Flesh areas, creamy cadaver. Open wounds, bloody crimson. Teeth, rotten yellow. Torture tools, paint and hang as desired. Ah yes, a crown of painful pins. Insert these in areas indicated. Your model is now complete. We hope your official pinhead cenobite will give you a lifetime of enjoyment. The problem of being, and the problem of being in the flesh, is something that comes up over and over again in my fiction, and actually in the movies too. In Hellraiser, one of the most painful scenes is seeing Frank, the creature the, who is barely spirit, being raised from that spirit because blood has been spilt on the floor, uh, building himself painfully, reconstructing himself painfully. I think we all have actually violent entries. We come in kicking and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> 
or we get the scream slapped into us. And uh, we, we love life, but I don't think we love it quite as much as we think we do. I think there's large parts of our spirit that yearn to be out of life. And that doesn't mean into death. Out of being, the business of being, the business of feeding, the business of shitting. Uh, tiresome business. Flesh is a curious thing. We are preoccupied in our culture uh, with the idea of beauty, with the idea of the perfectibility of beauty. I've just had five months in L.A. <laughs> People spending six hours of every day working out at gyms, getting tanned, approaching the conditions of gods and goddesses while their minds are starved and their sense of themselves withers. So something very interesting happens for me, which is that the, the body becomes some terrible mask. The problem of the body becomes almost a distraction. Come here, damn you, I want to touch you. Come to daddy. I find minds hugely sexy, conversation hugely erotic, and I always have. I've, I find the idea of sex and ritual and mystery and the forbidden elements of sex irresistible. The sexual experience is so transcendent and so bestial at the same time. And death is such a very obvious physical horror and yet offers up so many possibilities of transcendence at the same time. Both are mysterious and both are of course to do with the body and both are outside our control. Now all we need is skin. The monster never leaves. He just changes addresses. The shopping mall, a climate-controlled womb for blissful consumers seeking perhaps a lost sense of community, clutching coins for a piece of what's left of the 20th century. The 20th century. The problem is, it's all so real. When things get too real, you just know there's going to be some blood spilt. There's a fantastic carnival of culture in progress here. The mall's movie theatre, the mall's video library, the mall's bookstore. Long live the signed flesh. Somebody once said that they thought it took more courage to believe in God than not to believe in God. It was easy to say the, that life is meaningless, structureless, that we are an abstraction. Uh, that's a very cowardly way of looking at ourselves. And I feel the same about the business of art. Part of our hell reason with this? <laughs> <laughs> to be with Clive? <laughs> this is to James. James. This is to John. John with an H? Yep. Yeah. I need to see the raisin guy. <laughs> he's stuck right now. <laughs> oh, but he's great. <laughs> he takes the credit for it. I love it. I love it. The world wants originality. It may not think it wants it. Yeah. <laughs> Television doesn't want originality. Television wants to be the second to do everything. But uh, if you do have an original vision, however outre it is, however erotic, however dark, however forbidden the imagery is, I think people have an appetite for it. So I always say, just get on and do it. Very few things are as bad as you fear they'll be. This the Drulias knew. So they were experts at making you believe the worst. Huge eyes that seemed in the dark to belong to a much bigger and more ferocious animal. Teeth that were made for gnashing, but bad at gnawing. But it was all in the mind. The truth is, when seen.